Hi, this is Module 2, Section 1 uh, video, the first part of it. Uh, this is one of those sections that gets long. Uh, we're going to cover uh, annuity definitions and terminology. And so I split it up into two parts. This is the first part, Part 1 of 2. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, an annuity is nothing more than a sequence of periodic payments. And so our timeline will look something like this. We'll have a first payment that I'm calling CapEx 1, second payment I'm calling CapEx 2, and so forth. Uh, now, we have certain adjectives to describe an annuity. One would be a level. Level annuity is a sequence of periodic payments, all of which are equal. And so the, the, the CapEx 1, CapEx 2, they're all equal. So there's no use for the extra decoration, the subscript. There's no use for that. So we'll just, uh, just label those all as, as CapEx. They're all the same value. And then there's something that I'm going to call a basic level annuity, and that's one uh, that, uh, well, it's level, so all the payments are the one are equal to one, and they're all, uh, all the payments are level, and basic means that they're all equal to uh, a value of one. Uh, and so we're really going to focus our attention on basic level annuities, and, and you'll see why uh, later on in the video. Okay, so now let's get into some more definitions. The annuity start date is at the beginning of the first period, and the annuity end date is the end of the last period. So now you have to know, well, what's the first period and what's the, the, the second period and so forth. So maybe I'll have the, the period set up like this. Uh, you know, you have to identify what the first period is, and, and then you'll know what the annuity start date is, and likewise identify what the last period is, and you'll know what the annuity end date uh, is. Uh, now, an annuity is called an uh, an annuity immediate. So there's two basic kind of annuities that we're going to study. Annuity immediate. An annuity immediate is also called an ordinary annuity if the payments are at the end of each period. So I've got a, a, the picture that I have shown. I have the first period there. And so uh, if this is an annuity immediate, then I'm going to think of the, pay, the first payment at the end of the first period and the second payment at the end of the second period and so forth. The nth payment at the end of the, uh, of the uh, nth period. On the other hand, an annuity might be an annuity due and with an annuity due, the payments are, are thought of as at the beginning of each period. So with the first period shown, the first payment would be at the, at the beginning of the first period. The second payment would be at the beginning of the second period, and, and so forth. So that would be an annuity due. An annuity immediate has payments at the end of the period, and annuity due has payments at the beginning of the period. Okay. Now, some more terminology here. Uh, all, all financial calculations are going to have a valuation date. And then the value of an annuity at the valuation date is the single sum value at the valuation date in which one is indifferent to receiving instead of receiving the periodic payments that form the annuity. So that gets kind of, you know, long and wordy. So let's look at an example. Let's say I have a three payment annuity and the payments are $7,000, $2,000, and, and $5,000. Let's say the valuation date is, is, is shown where that arrow is. So I'll typically use that notation. I'll put an arrow where the valuation date is. Remember, all financial calculations have a valuation date. You have to know what the valuation date is before you'll be able to tell me what the value of the annuity is. Okay, so now let's say that, uh, that the interest rate is, is, is 25%. The periodic effective interest rate in this case is 25%. And I'm tell you that the value of the annuity of this annuity at that valuation date is 7,552. Don't worry about how I got the number. That's not what I'm the, the point that I'm trying to make here. What I'm trying to, 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 to teach you right now is what it means to be the value of an annuity. I mentioned before that it's an indifference value, that somebody is indifferent to one or the other things. So in this case, the indifference value is 70, 7,552. And what that means is uh, the the 7552 I should be indifferent to receiving that versus receiving the 7000 the 2000 and the 5000 later let me explain how uh, you know the 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 reasoning behind that or, or the logic behind that with an with a uh, uh, an interest rate a periodic effective interest rate of 0.25 the periodic accumulation factor is a 1.25 now I'm going to think of that 7552 uh, that I'm going to think of that valuation date at which that's the value as a time zero I'm I'm thinking that as now at time zero so I'm thinking of the amount at time zero which I'll label a sub zero a 7552 now if I had that uh, 
if I had the 7552, the idea behind being an indifference value is that you could, if you took the 7552 and you accumulate that for two periods, so I would do that by multiplying by a 1.25 squared and I'd get 11,800. And I'm going to, I'm going to denote that as an, as a, as a cap A sub two with a superscript of a minus sign. So the two minus means that's at time two, but that's just before I pay the $7,000. You see what I'm going to do is now pay from the 11,800, take out 7,000 and make that payment. And that's going to leave me with 4,800, uh, uh, just after I've made that $7,000 payment. And so I'm thinking that as a two plus time value. So cap A at time two, just before the payment of 7,000 would be 11,800 and cap A at time two, just after would be 4,800. So now what I'm gonna do, well, I'll take the 4,800, I'm gonna accumulate that for another period by multiplying by 1.25 and I'll end up with 6,000 just before I make the $2,000 payment. So that's at time three minus. And then at time three plus, just after I'd have 4,000. And then I'm gonna accumulate that for one more period. And just before I, I have that payment of 5,000 to make, I have exactly 5,000. So just immediately after I make the payment, I have zero. That's what I mean by the value of the annuity being 7552. That's exactly how much money you, you would need to have so that when you invest it over time at whatever the interest rate is that, that you're using to calculate that value, you'll have exactly enough money to make those payments. So that's, that's the indifference value. You know, if, if I had any more than 7,552, then I would have money left over after I made the $5,000 payment. If I had any less than 7,552, I wouldn't have enough money to make the $5,000 payment. So the indifference value between the payments of 7,000 and then 2,000 and then 5,000, the indifference value two periods before the first payment or, or, or that payment of 7,000 using a periodic effective interest rate of 25% is exactly the 7,552. We'll talk in later sections how to get that number. There's several different ways to get that number, and we'll 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 talk we'll talk what, how how to get that uh, in a in a later video. Okay, let's go back to uh, the basic level annuity. This was the uh, the basic level annuity. Why do I talk? Why do we want to focus our attention on these basic level annuities? Well, it's for this reason. Let's say that at some valuation date. I know what the value is, and I call that value V. So V in this case is the value at the valuation date of this basic level annuity. Well, what if the, it was a level annuity, but it wasn't basic? What if it was had other, it had level payments, but the payments were not one? Let's say the payments just for, you know, ease, let's say the payments were equal to a two. And the question was, well, what's the value at that same valuation date? Well, what I'll do is I'll think of the payments uh, at each time of two as having two different buckets where each bucket had a payment of one in it. So really I've got a level annuity of ones on top of, or, or in addition to another level annuity of ones. And I know that the value at the valuation date for each one of those annuities, the, the each one of those basic level annuities is V. So at the valuation date, I would have V plus V or two V values. Uh, two V would be the value of the annuity that had payments of two. And so if I had a payment generally of, of cap X, the value at that valuation date would be cap X times V, where V was the value at the valuation, valuation date of the basic level annuity. So that's why I'm focusing on basic level annuities. Okay, finally, the last few slides have to do with something called a perpetuity. A perpetuity is an annuity in which the payments just continue forever. And so, of course, a perpetuity would have no end date. It doesn't end. Uh, but it does have a start date. Uh, now, if I choose a valuation date at the arrow shown in this particular slide, if that's my valuation date, that's when I want to value those payments, then I'm thinking of the first period as that period immediately after that valuation date. And so the first payment then would be at the beginning of the first period. The second payment would be at the beginning of the second period and so forth. And so I'm thinking this, this would be, could be thought of as the start date for a perpetuity due. On the other hand, if uh, my valuation date was one period before the first payment, then I'm thinking of, again, that period just after the valuation date is the first 
first period. So the first payment would be one uh, at the end of the first period. The second payment would be at the end of the second period and so forth. And so in this case, uh, where the valuation date is, uh, that would be the start date of a perpetuity immediate. And so I have these two different, uh, um, two different uh, start dates. Uh, one would be a start date of a perpetuity due, and then the other is the start date of the perpetuity immediate, uh, depending on uh, when the first uh, when the first um, uh, period is is thought of. So, okay. Well, I will see you in the next video.